fourth and final heat of heavy DT. Your overall leader will be in lane five. That's Matt Fraser. He currently has a 58-point lead in the standings over Bjorgen Gubinson, and Matt Fraser can move a barbell. Yeah, I think Matt is just going to do damage to this heavy DT. I mean, anytime you put a barbell in this kid's hands, he is just, he will destroy the event. So the field has to be aware of exactly where he's sitting. He already has a lead, and this is going to be a good workout for him. He started Olympic lifting at the age of 12. Ben Smith is only 25 years old, but this is his seventh trip to the CrossFit Games. And the first time we were here, when it was the Home Depot Center, he was here at 19, so man, did you talk about a veteran. The final heat for the men on Hero Friday at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. The event Heavy DT once again named after United States Air Force Staff Sergeant Timothy B. Davis, who was killed in action on February 20th, 2009, supporting ops in Operation Enduring Freedom when a IED destroyed the vehicle in which he was riding. Noah Olson, your current leader. It's 12 deadlifts, 9 hang power cleans, 6 shoulder to overhead, Five rounds of that, 135 reps, is the magic number. Ben Smith, Alex Anderson, Matt Frazier, Noah Olson, and Cole Sager all in that lead pace. Noah Olson, he's usually known to just go just 100% all the time with you know in these workouts. He usually doesn't pace. Uh, talking to Dusty Highland, his coach, they really worked on that with him over the course of the year. So he's we're trying to see if he actually learns how to pace. Now we've seen him in the in the some of the other events, trying to gain the workout a little bit, trying to think strategy. It might. I don't know if it's really going to work so much. I mean, that's not where he is yet. But all these movements, he's pretty strong. So we have the deadlift. That's pulling that bar just from the ground, just to the hip. Then we're going to move, and then we have 12 reps of that. Then we're going to move towards just at a hang power clean, which is pulling it from the hips just to the shoulders over and over for nine reps. And then we go to the very top, shoulder to overhead for six. Ben Smith has overtaken Noah Olsen for the top spot in this heat. Now Olsen... Fighting back, the time to beat is 9.17.14 seconds. It belongs to Scott Panchik. Matt Fraser creeping up on Olsen, and Fraser threatening to take over the top spot in this heat as well. Alex Anderson is tied. You have a four-way tie for first place. Now Matt Fraser has jumped into first. Noah Olsen, an impressive rookie last year. He finished eighth at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. And led the competition for a couple of events yeah this is a little bit different than it was last year he's you know kind of sitting more towards the middle than he's used to but i think that we're going to see you know, a, a, a pretty a pretty intense no olsen over the next couple days olsen had a bad wednesday but he recovered in murph the first event of today and he comes into dt ranks 10th overall he's at a peak 360 crossfit in Miami, Florida, he's on the right of your screen. Matt Fraser, the overall leader, is on the left, and he currently has a four-rep lead over Ben Smith. Matt Fraser will be the first man to his third round of 12 deadlifts, nine hang power cleans, six shoulder to overhead, 205 pounds, and now Ben Smith has joined him in his third round. Ben Smith is just so strong, and when it comes to barbell movements, he's so efficient. He doesn't, he makes it look so easy, and this is 205 pounds, and he makes it look like it's only 135 pounds. He just moves consistently, doesn't show a lot of emotion, and just kind of cruises through all of them. Ben Smith coming into this event in fifth place overall, but it's Matt Fraser who sits atop the leaderboard. He's on the right of your screen. Matt Fraser decided that he wanted to make the 2016 United States Olympic weightlifting team after high school. He moved to the Olympic Training Center in Colorado, but he had to give up that goal after a back injury sidelined him. He went to a CrossFit gym later on so he could just use their bumper plates to lift, got talked into competing, and here he is vying for the title of the fittest man on earth. One 
power clean to go, and this is a smart place to rest because you minimize the extra work you have to do. And all these guys, if, if we look at the old DT, the, the, the normal would be breaking at 11 on the deadlift, at 8 for the hang power cleans, and then go all the way through for the shoulder to overhead. These are heavier weights. You're going to see them basically cut that up in half, but they're still going to want to break right before they make that switch to that, that next movement, and all of these athletes have done that. That Fraser is your overall points leader. He has 332. Ben Smith is in fifth place. He's 94 points back. The two of them at exactly the same time rolling their ball barbells to the round four station. And they'll begin again with 12 deadlifts. Move on to nine hang power cleans and then six shouldered overhead. The weight on the bar is 205 pounds. The time to beat belongs to Scott Panjic. Nine minutes, 17.14 seconds. Fraser on the right, Smith on the left. Noah Olson is in third. He's trying to hold off Alex Anderson and Cole Sager. Cole Sager in the white shorts with no shirt. Noah Olson in the blue shorts on the right of your screen. Noah Olson now moving into third place. He's a couple reps ahead of Cole Sager. Alex Anderson into fourth. Ben Smith has taken the lead from Matt Fraser. Smith is resting and Fraser now back on the barbell as the two of them trade the top spot. You can see Matt actually bends over quite a bit. It's hard to get a trained Olympic lifter to look for speed rather than efficiency in a heavy weight, but that may be slowing him down. Ben Smith not leaning over nearly as much. Ben Smith, at 25 years old, is making his seventh appearance at the CrossFit Games. He's been inside the top eight four times. He stood on the podium twice. He was third in 2011 and then third again in 2013. 135 reps is the magic number, and Smith with 29 to go. Matt Fraser on the right. Falling back into second place, and Ben Smith, the first man to the fifth and final round of heavy DT. Matt Fraser is done, and he will join Ben Smith, but Smith right to work on his final set of 12 deadlifts. The time to beat the upper left-hand corner of your screen belongs to Scott Panjic, 917.14. Now, yes, Matt Fraser was the second fittest on the planet last year. But Ben Smith has the experience, so I think that experience is really carrying through with the pacing. So, I mean, the second he puts the bar down from going so low to overhead, he goes right into those deadlifts where Matt is resting and taking a little bit more of a break. Ben Smith currently about 15 seconds ahead of Scott Panchik's pace. This is the battle for third place. Noah Olson on the right. Cole Sager in the white shorts in the middle. Next to them is Alex Anderson in the blue shirt. Smith at 125, he has 10 reps left, and then he has to cross the finish line. Frazier, six reps back. Smith trying to gain ground on the overall leader. Frazier just trying to hang on to his overall lead, which he will do given his performance here in DT. One rep to go for Ben Smith. Now on to his six. Shoulder to overhead, two to go. One for Smith. Wow. Ben Smith wow. is going to win heavy DT. Wow, he doesn't even look tired. A crushing time and he doesn't even look exhausted. Matt Fraser trying to hang on to second place. He still has plenty of time to go before we hit the 917.14 mark. That's Scott Panchik's time, which is now the second best. Smith locks up 100 points. Fraser, if he can beat Panchik, will get 94 and could he widen his lead even more over the field. One more for Fraser. He is done. And Matt Fraser will finish second in heavy DT. And he's threatening to run away with this competition. Noah Olson and Jonkowski. The man who came into the day, Koski, with the overall lead. He's only 20 years old out of Corey, Finland. This is his second year at the CrossFit Games. Two sophomores fighting for the third position here in heavy DT. 
Noah really looks strong as he's moving through those through those weights. But Yon, you know what? After after having such a great first day, and then really struggling on that speed snatch, that snap speed ladder, this is an impressive showing with the barbell for him. Impressive. Scott Pansy will hang on to third place overall. Valuable points for him. He'll get 88 added to his total. Olsen has moved ahead of Koski for third. Koski in the foreground. Next to him in the blue shirt is Alex Anderson. Next to Anderson with the white shorts is Cole Sager and then Noah Olsen on the outside. Jordan Gubinson in the orange shirt, the man who came in in second place overall, 58 points behind Matt Fraser, is trying to move up and try to keep Fraser within reach. Noah Olson trying to hang on to that 205 pound barbell. That is allowed to slip. Jerked out, and Noah Olson is in. That was smart. Olsen will finish third in this heat. That's seventh overall in this event for him. A solid result for Olsen. A no rep there given to Koski. He's trying to lock up fourth place in this heat. He's three ahead of Alex Anderson, who's on the right of your screen. One to go for Koski, and he will get in. So Joe Koski closing out his day of competition. 1037.14, that's good for 10th overall in the event, 4th in the seat. That's Tyson Takasaki out of Canada West. He's across the finish line. Four men still on the floor. Lucas Hochberg is one of them. Jordan Gubmanson in the bottom left of your screen. Alex Anderson just got no rep. And Cole Sager in his second year here at the CrossFit Games. 12 minute time cap, 45 seconds to go. Noah Olsen trying to encourage fellow sophomore Cole Sager. One to go for Alex Anderson. And Anderson will get in inside the 12 minute time cap. That's big for him. Another rookie here at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Anderson six in the heat. That'll be good enough for 19th overall in this event. Norman Gubinson just trying to get as many reps as he possibly can before that 12 minute time cap hits. He came into this event in second place overall. Now 10 seconds to go. Every rep is going to count. And Cole's grip is just completely gone. He's actually having to do singles on these hang power cleans. They're just shot. You won't get credit for that last rep. Ben Smith does all 135 reps and he does them in 7 minutes 55.97 seconds to get his first event win of these 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Insane. Getting congratulated by Tyson Takasaki. Ben Smith has been to the game seven times and he said that this is the first time that he comes in 100% healthy. Chad McKay out of Australia hurt his collarbone. He came in in the top 10 and stopped competing. He did not finish the event. No, no, no also also. did though. Yeah, just incredible the way he was working through here. Again, we're, he's, he's kind of a wild card in how he competes. You always kind of want to see what he's going to do, but what an impressive way to hang on, even going to that split jerk. Very smart for such a young athlete all the way through this event. Real powerful. First place, though, Ben Smith, who held off Matt Fraser in the fifth and final round. Matt Fraser, we knew he was going to be tough through this particular event, and it was a battle between him and Ben all the way through. But Matt, you know, he put a barbell in his hand, and he's deadly anyways. We knew he was going to do well. He didn't have to win this. He has so many points already, but a second place finish overall, that's going to be deadly to the field. Fraser across the finish line but could not get ahead of this man, Ben Smith, who looked efficient throughout this event. And the experience paid off. I mean, that, that's all I have to say about Ben right here. This was experience winning this, this particular event. Ben Smith with the only sub eight minute time out of four heats, 755.97 seconds. He gets 100 points and he's standing by with Nikki Brazier.
Ben, the fans have spoken. They picked heavy DT. What did you think of that variation of the workout there? Uh, thank you guys for picking that one. I kind of liked it a little bit. You looked cool, calm, and collected. I want to ask you, I know that your father, Chuck, was in the Navy. You did a couple hero workouts today. What did that mean to you? That means that means a lot, you know. Um, doing a workout for somebody who sacrificed everything for all the freedoms you have every single day. Uh, it's pretty awesome to be able to do that, and especially in front of all these fans who are awesome. So thank you, guys. Well, you walked across that finish line like you absolutely owned it. Is that the mentality you have going in today, the next day here? Uh, of course, you kind of have to have that mentality every day. Um, I'm ready for some more, so let's have some fun. Congratulations. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Ben Smith, his first win of the competition here at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Behind him, Matt Fraser and Scott Hanchik will get 88 points, and he needed those. Rob Forte out of Australia in fourth. Aaron Hanna, the rookie, rounding out the top five. Overall standings at the end of Friday after five events, Matt Fraser with an 88-point lead over Ben Smith, who vaults into second place. Jon Koski sits in third. Jordan Gubinson, who came into the event in second, drops to fourth. And Noah Olson moving up the leaderboard yet again. He now sits in fifth. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan. Matt, this was the first year that fans got to vote on a workout of the CrossFit Games. They chose heavy instead of double. What do you have to say to these guys? Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Ten rounds would have been uh, brutal, uh, and we all would have been trash for tomorrow. So thank you for picking heavy. Well, recovery is an issue for everyone. You're the only person in the field who finished top three in all the last three events today. How do you manage that kind of recovery? I'll tell you tomorrow. <laughs> I'm not sure. I uh, just eat a lot, sleep a lot, and try to relax. All right, you came in here with a lot of pressure. Second place last last year. You've been training with the champ, Rich Froning. How does all that pressure change once you step on the court? Uh, I kind of use that as motivation. Um, I've lived the last year as the number one loser from last year, so I, I don't want that to happen again. Right, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Matt Fraser is known for smashing pints of ice cream while he trains, and I'm sure there are a couple back in his hotel room with his name on them. Heavy DT is in the books. Day number two is history. For the latest results and standings, head to games.crossfit.com. Whitney Galen will see if her time will last through one final heat as she edges out the two-time champion, Emily Abbott. Finishing in third, followed by Lindsey Valenzuela and Nicole Holcomb. The fourth and final heat, the top ten athletes in the overall standings. Your overall leader is in lane five. That's Anna Tonicliffe. Cara Webb, who suffered from some heat-related issues in lane six. That was during Murph. She is back. Sam Briggs, who won Murph, didn't do too well in the snatch speed ladder. Be interesting to see how she handles some heavy barbells here in heavy DT meanwhile Carl Webb who had to be taken off the field on a stretcher he got treated for some heat related issues fourth trip to the CrossFit Games final heat at DT 135 total reps 145 pounds on the barbell 12 deadlifts nine hang power cleans six shoulder to overhead five rounds we saw that Annie Thor's daughter in the previous heat was be able to come back from those heat-related issues. And we're hoping to see Webb do the same thing. Webb came into today sitting in first place, only dropped to second coming into this event. So a really strong day for her. She wants to finish up well. Watch the way she drops that barbell down. She flips her hands open just to save the grip a bit. She's a smart athlete. She loves CrossFit-style events. Cara Webb not in the top five of this event right now. The time to beat belongs to Whitney Galen. 946.15. Rookie Sarah Sigmund's daughter is your leader. 135 reps is the magic number. Sarah Sigmund's daughter's through 27, and she's moving her barbell on to round two. Sigmund's daughter came in to this day in third place and is still there now. She is a rookie from Iceland. This girl is proving that she is legit. She's here to go against the test. She's not just here to compete against the woman. She came literally to play. She's not just here to participate. Sarah Sigmund's daughter 
beat Annie Thor's daughter at the regional level when she won the Meridian Regional and did it by never finishing outside the top nine in seven events. Her lowest finish was ninth. The rest of the finishes were fourth or better in seven events. Katrine David's daughter, another woman out of Iceland. So the two Icelandic women leading this heat. Katrin, though, came into today in 15th place, is now sitting in fourth into this final event. Moved her way up the leaderboard and wants to stay there. She's an aggressive athlete, one that's trained with Annie Thor's daughter for the past year and is definitely a different athlete than we were used to seeing from last year. More aggressive, more confident. Mentally, she's just become a much stronger athlete. David's daughter is a woman who failed to qualify in 2014. This is your overall leader, Anna Tonicliffe, and she is struggling with this 145-pound barbell. That's her final shoulder to overhead on round one. Tonicliffe has the lead in the point standings coming in, but only by eight points over Carl Webb. Sean, this could be the event where she loses that lead. Just seeing what that barbell is doing to her in her first round is not a good sign for her to keep that lead. Sarah Sigmund's daughter in the light blue tank top is your leader. She's continuing to rip that barbell off the ground. She already is 30 seconds ahead of the top pace set by Whitney Glenn. And from what we've seen from her, she really does know herself. She doesn't seem to go out too fast at any pace that she can't maintain. Sigmund's daughter more than halfway through the 135 reps. She has a huge lead over her countrywoman, Katrine David's daughter, who is 14 reps back. Michelle Atollin sits in third. And Katrin is who inspired Sarah Sigmund's daughter to even start CrossFit. Katrin making the games is what she was looking at. She started CrossFit because she wanted to find a boyfriend, though, Sean. <laughs> Whatever gets you in the gym, I guess. <laughs> Seems like it worked out pretty well for Captain Davis out She's here at the CrossFit Games. And she, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, and Michelle Latondra are on their third round. Carl Webb is there as well, but everyone is chasing Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Carl Webb currently sits in sixth place in this heat. She's trying to chase down China Cho for fifth. Sigma's daughter now on to round four. We've seen some rookies in multiple events come out with an aggressive pace. Right now, she's 45 seconds ahead of Galin's pace. You guys, Carla Webb is putting on an amazing show of showmanship here. And you heard from Whitney Galin, who was your leader from the last team. All these women have banded together to ensure that they get through this competition together. It was definitely inspiring to hear that out of everything she was looking forward to most, Whitney said that she was looking forward to competing with everyone, especially Cara, considering what a tough time she had after Murph earlier on today. It really just shows that, you know, we draw inspiration from so many people, this being a hero workout, but these ladies are finding inspiration from each other in the same event they're competing against each other. That's where I really think, Sean, it shows you that they're not just competing against each other, they're competing against this thing called the CrossFit Games, this test that's proving to see who really deserves to be here, who's going to be on the podium, who is the fittest on earth. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, grip starting to go as the barbell slipped from her hands, and David's daughter creeping up, still 11 reps behind Sigmund's daughter. The two Icelandic women in front of the eight other women in this fourth and final heat of DT, named after United States Air Force Staff Sergeant Timothy P. Davis, who was killed in action in Operation Enduring Freedom on February 20th, 2009, when his vehicle hit an IED. 35 reps to go for Sarah Sigmund's daughter, but she is starting to slow down and David's daughter creeping closer. David's daughter on the right, Sigmund's daughter on the left. Notice a little bit of difference here in their form. Sigmund's daughter is falling apart just a bit, looking a little bit more reckless. David's daughter is really staying composed. She's really methodical about her reps and about her form, her technique. The more efficient you can be with better mechanics, you're wasting less effort, and it's gonna bode well for you come the last round. 
Sigmund's daughter onto that fifth and final round. She is only eight points back of Anna Tunnicliffe. She's tied with Carl Webb for points in the standings. If Sarah Sigmund's daughter wins this event and Tunnicliffe and Webb continue to struggle, Sarah Sigmund's daughter will be on top of the overall leaderboard after two days. Despite the fact that she's slowing down, she's still 40 seconds ahead of the pace set by Whitney Galen when she put up the top time so far in the third heat at 946.15. A lot of Iceland flags are in the crowd. We saw them draping over the walls of the stadium, the soccer stadium earlier today when these women did Murph. Quite the following for all the Icelandic athletes here at the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. Sigmund's daughter starting to extend her lead back to double digits over capturing David's daughter, Michelle Latom, Sam Briggs, and Cara Webb fighting for third. Twelve reps between Sarah Sigmund's daughter and a possible event win. I talked to Sarah Sigmund's daughter's coach earlier in the week, and he said the only thing that this girl lacks is experience. That's just scary because you can see how she fights with that barbell. She holds on, she grits. She doesn't need to be taught how to dig in, how to go into competition mode. She just needs the experience here of just knowing what this is all about, and next year's gonna be even scarier. She is really showing, as a rookie, her capabilities this early on in, in the game. Just four reps for Sarah Sigmund's daughter, and she's not letting go of that barbell. Two to go. One for Sarah Sigmund's daughter. And there's a new Icelandic CrossFit queen here at the games, and it's Sarah Sigmund's daughter. She will be your overall leader after two days of the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. And that, those are some happy Icelanders. That was incredible. Sarah Sigmund's daughter doing what Annie Thor's daughter wanted to do by holding on to those last six reps. Was able to... You saw her smile after that, too. Very, very impressive. Adrian David's daughter can still lock up a second place finish. She's got to hurry, though. She has eight reps to go. The time to beat by Whitney Galin coming into the seat was 9.46. That's currently the second best time. David's daughter can get 94 points if she can beat that. She's focused though. She knows exactly the task at hand. David's daughter is done, and she will finish second in the heat. That was second a great finish for her. Overall, as the Icelandic women take the top two spots in DT. Love, I love David's daughter's. Her just a determination, her focus all the way through. It was on her face from the beginning. She had a mission, mission and she stepped to it all the way through, even though Sigma's daughter was so much faster, always ahead. Overall leader, and leader Anna Tonicliffe is still on the floor and now just finishing her third of five rounds with a 12 minute time cap here. So very likely that Anna Tonicliffe will come up against that cap and not get in inside that 12 minutes and she will fall from the top spot on the leaderboard. Unfortunately for Tonicliffe, it's just the, the common thing we see so often. Michelle Lacar is in. The woman who finished fourth at the 2014 Reebok CrossFit Games. She came in in sixth place overall, trying to move up the leaderboard and get on to the podium. She moved her way up from 14th when she came where she came in today, Sean, up to six. This is only going to help her. Mara Webb trying to hold off Sam Briggs for fourth place in this heat. Sarah Sigmund's daughter cheering on Samantha Briggs, the woman she often trains with. At the top of your screen, it's Carl Webb. Her final shoulder to overhead, and Carl Webb closing out a tumultuous day as the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games. And this will be a solid result for Sam Briggs, who doesn't really like a barbell. She's better at the longer events. Webb is 10th overall in the event. Briggs with three to go, trying to get fifth in this heat. 
solid fight though for Briggs. Woman known for her lungs, for her endurance, her ability to go the wrong way, but this is what a 145 pound barbell moving fast does to a woman who has lungs. Sarah Sigmund's daughter is trying to help Sam Briggs. She's gonna she's helping her manage her rest and counting down the rest time to help Sam get right back on that barbell. Now one to go for Samantha Briggs, the 2013 fittest woman on earth, and she can't get that barbell over her head. China Cho is next to her, and Cho is trying to get in inside that 12-minute time cap. 14 seconds. Briggs is going to make it. Cho is close. Nine seconds for China Cho. She's going to make it with about four seconds to spare. Cho, I am so impressed with her performance. Time after time, each event, she is just keeping herself up there at the top. Awesome. And a ton of cliff. Hits the wall here in DT, and she will fall from the top spot of the leaderboard. You can read it all over her face, the disappointment. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, the rookie from Iceland, wins heavy DT, and she will sit atop the overall standings after two days of competition. Two days remain. It was Katrin Davis' daughter, though, another Icelandic woman who pushed her in this event. Pushed Sarah the whole way, but she stayed composed, was very methodical. She was focused and didn't deviate from her plan. Each round looked the same, held off for those very last reps, was able to do so because she had, she had so much left in the tank. But it was Sarah Sigmund's daughter who just took this thing from the start, got faster as the event progressed, and just with reckless abandon took off. Manhandled that bar at 145 pounds and just showed us that she is here, she's legit, and there's a new kid in town. Sarah Sigmund's daughter is a rookie, but she is on top of the overall standings after five events in two days, and she is with Nikki Brazier. Your first time to the CrossFit Games here, and a very big win after this long day. Now you're sitting on the top of the leaderboard. Tell me, what was your reaction when you found out that this was going to be heavy, DT? Uh, I was very heavy. Uh, I, it didn't really matter if it had been double or heavy. It was good for me. Now I saw your family in the stands. They're holding up your flag. They've got shirts with your name on them. Is that helping you get through these events? Yeah, it helps a lot. Uh, my dad, he has a really big sun hat, so I always look at him. <laughs> that makes it easier. Now, talk about tomorrow, another long day. Is there any particular movement or event you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to doing the pick. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I've never tried it. I, I tried the pick number one, so I'm happy that there's a pick. <laughs> well, we're excited to see how you tackle it tomorrow. Congratulations. It's a big day, a big win for you here. Overall standings after five events, two days still to go, but it's a rookie, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, who sits atop the leaderboard by 40 points over both Carl Webb and another Icelandic woman, Katrin David's daughter. There's a lot of pressure when you're sitting in first place at the top of the leaderboard, but if there is any rookie who can handle it, I think Sarah has shown us that she can do just that. The best rookie finish we've seen since the Open era was Elena Fortunato, who finished third. Sarah Sigma's daughter might be able to improve on that. Heavy DT in the books. Day two in the books. Annie Thora's daughter and her fellow Icelandic women putting on a show here. Carl Webb with a nice comeback as well for the latest standings and results at thegames.crossfit.com. Coverage continues tomorrow at 3. All right, I'm on RF1.